Episode 20 of the Long Haul Podcast. Welcome everyone listening on YouTube or on your podcast apps or on Twitch. It's our first time on Twitch. Hey, Kerry. Hey, guys. Guess it's back. Me. <laughs> Doing well? Tough week, eh? Very hard week. Very, very complicated week for me. Yeah. Let's not talk too much about it. So... Um, we don't generally record podcasts on Friday. It's generally not a great day, but um, it's been a busy week with a fake leaked uh, patch notes circulating on Twitch. And then I ended up getting a message on Reddit and uh, posted them. And uh, there was a bit of a discussion going on. Did you, uh, did you follow the Reddit post? Yes. So much hate, so much love, so much praise, and so much hate. <laughs> So basically just normal Reddit, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the everyday Reddit type, yes. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got a um, message by this guy, Jiha Mukre. It's basically uh, like a oh, please say it again. one day old account. I don't say know how it again. to pronounce it. Pronounce, just say it. Make, make my day, come on. Just, just, Jiha just Mukre? It. Yeah, so good. <laughs> I, we, we, butcher, <laughs> so, we butcher names so well. For sure. <laughs> um, this is basically a throwaway account, I think. This guy, like the account where he texted me was basically it, like one day old at the time. And um, yeah, he sent me this uh, this post, where which I guess most people have seen by now. Just before everyone starts flaming us, yes, we know it was red flags all over the place as soon as we noticed that. And Nine posted it's probably fake, and then people were like bashing on it because it was probably oh. fake. So, if there's people on the Twitch chat, uh, first of all, if you want to talk to us, go ahead. We'll read and interact. Um, second of all, just wanted to show the message that the guy sent me because I immediately said, you know, that looks fake and so on. Uh, yeah, this is supposed to be Artifact 2.0 leak circulated on Twitch. Do you have any information if it's real? Here's the pastebin link. And I said, this is the first I heard of it, uh, who was spreading this. And he says it was a random guy on Twitch, whatever. And I said, you know, I think this is fake. In the meantime, I emailed, I emailed Valve. Didn't expect an answer, but, uh, you know, tried anyway. And um, yeah, and then I told him, you know, your Reddit account is one day old. That doesn't have much credibility. And the guy said, uh, yeah, I wanted to share the, the link on Reddit, but he had no account before, etc." So everything basically was, you know, like you said, red flags. But um, yeah, that's why I posted. I mean, I was careful posting this. I didn't want people to, you know, get on my back. I posted alleged artifact patch notes leak. I said, credit goes to this guy. Here's the link. And I said, I think it's fake. Yeah, I think before we go on to uh, maybe discuss some Reddit reactions, we, we can um, go through the post itself, right? Discuss what we think. I mean, by, um, on Twitch, I, I tweeted at a couple of Valve devs. So this is confirmed fake, OK? Just for everyone listening that is un unaware of what happened, this is confirmed fake. But um, someone went to through a, like a, a hell of a lot of work just to put this together. <laughs> I mean, that is really a lot of work. If anyone was able to to to, to read the post that you put, it's it's like insane amount of work just to feed us like fake news. Yeah, um, a lot of work for a fake post. So people are still trolling on this game. That happens every time I stream on Twitch as well. People come in and say, "Why the hell are you, are you streaming this game?" But um, yeah. So let's let's look at these notes, right? So just I'm not gonna we're not gonna extensively read this. This is way too long. But um, I'm gonna read some bits of it, and we're gonna talk about what we thought was interesting. He starts by saying, "Well, first of all, there's a bunch of uh, typos and grammar mistakes and so on." Just wanted to say that. Uh, Icefrog, at least, when he releases Dota patches, often there are some mistakes. So I kind of uh, ignored that, thinking, you know, like, if this is really a leak, it's possible that there are some mistakes because it's also not an official post yet. 
But um, red flag number one was it's full of typos and grammar mistakes. And the choice of words is like really poor. Um, yeah. But we'll go through that. I don't want to give credit to the wrong person. And I, if my memory doesn't fool me, I think it was Fu from the, the Mythgar team. Mm -hmm. um, he, he gave us like, even before Valve told us that it was fake. And by Valve, uh, we, we got uh, confirmation it was fake by Eric. I can't remember his last name. Robson. Yeah. He's an artist uh, yeah, at Valve. Uh, Fu uh, was the person that gave us the first uh, heads up on it's probably fake because most of the things that are written in it wouldn't be things that a developer would writ write. And if uh, it was already been sweeped through by the the team that normally posts this, it wouldn't have so much grammar errors. So uh, that was the first indication for us that it was probably going to be a, a bust. Yeah, but let's let's go dive in into the, the, the points that we think are interesting, the ones that we think are total rubbish. <laughs> yeah, so right at the beginning, the guy starts off by saying they have critically analyzed the economy surrounding artifacts. They've decided the cost, the initial cost of the game, the $20 was too much of a hurdle and they wanted Artifact to be free. And therefore everyone who had bought the game will get special versions of the cards that they had at the time of the patch. And these special versions cannot be obtained anymore. So basically what they're saying is, you know, I have a full collection. So since the game goes free, now I get a full shiny collection and those shiny cards cannot be obtained any other way. And he says also like um, you can now earn cards for free through just like gameplay like you do in Hearthstone or whatever free to play game you, you have, like just the usual model. And whatever cards you get through this free to play mode will not be marketable. So only bot cards or cards earned from prize play can be marketable. Yeah. What do you this, think? This, this was really nasty because um, a lot of people were debated and um, we noticed that like one day or 24 hours after you put this on and people start reading it, the total collection value went up like $10. Oh, really? Um, wow, that I didn't, I didn't yeah, notice. Yeah, it was really, it was really uncool. Let's, let's say like, well, it was good for people who actually were trying to sell stuff. But um, for like 24 to two days, 24 hours to two days, the, the collection total value went up like $10. I know some people were mad on Reddit saying like, why would you give people who had cards more cards and why can I not obtain them? So people were a bit mad about that. I feel honestly... legacy <laughs> players deserve some love. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why you would be mad that other people got something. Um, you know, there's there are people who are more extreme and want refunds. Um, I don't think that's ever going to happen. No way that Valve is just going to give money back to people. But um, if you give people virtual hats or shiny cards, I don't know why would you be mad? Like you've had seven months to buy cards. If you sold sold all your cards, then you got the money back. If you held on to them, then it's cool that people who held on to them got something. It's not cool that that leads to speculation and people will buy cards, you know, the day before a patch comes out or whatever, because they're expecting to get stuff. But yeah, I don't see why you would get mad for other people getting something. It's not like you're getting penalized or something. Yeah, well, that's just a typical mentality of people who are used to free-to-play stuff. So the the patch uh, notes, these fake notes, go on to say that there's a new set called Spoils of War. I mean, the first set was called Call to Arms, so it actually would make some sense that Spoils of War would be like the next set. It says this first expansion introduces 16 new heroes, misspelled and over 100 new cards. Explore, explore the lore by listening to unique voice lines for every card, whatever. Um, that's not really new. Yeah, so this is what is more interesting here is they say, we carefully evaluated the feedback the community gave us, and uh, we decided to adjust the existing gameplay to cater for both the players who liked the game and those that didn't. And because of that, we're introducing a new mode called 
turbo play game, turbo play. And this turbo play is supposed to kind of uh, cater to the new players to make the game faster and less complex. I think if you think uh, the game is too slow and you need it to be easier, you're playing the wrong game. Well, I have I have a lot of, uh, a lot of things to say, a lot of thoughts about this. Um, I was actually playing around with Red Mist stats tool, and I I saw that the average game on Red Mist is 16 minutes. Um, and I mean, mine, you you play Magic. How long does a Magic game take? Well, if you play like a tournament match, um, best of three, it will take generally, I would say, on average, probably 35, 40 minutes, but it can go to an hour. But, but it's generally it, best of three in competitive. Yeah, but does it take like 30 minutes one game or the three games? One game, right? Uh, three, Like a best of three. So um, if I'm playing in a tournament and I win 2-0, maybe that takes half an hour. Slow deck will take longer, but... I would say, in general, like you can expect each game to like take twenty minutes if it's a yeah. competitive game, and something like that. But it depends a lot on if their deck is aggressive or control, or you know. Exactly, it actually happens the same. You get faster or slower games when you play Artifact. If you played, mm -hmm. I don't know, Hearthstone, for example, like the fastest game can take like ten minutes if you're playing aggro and the other guy has nothing in his hand, or it could take like thirty to forty minutes if you're playing control. I mean, we're we're playing trading card games. You, you're supposed to have like an average of 20 minutes per game. So I don't, the idea of having a turbo mode, I've heard that they're going to put turbo mode on like uh, Overlords, but that's a different game and a different mechanics. I know the game when you start playing, even before you see the chess piece move, the, the, the winner is already decided because the action is calculated. So turbo mode in a game like that makes sense. Turbo mode in a game like this makes zero sense to me. Um, I, I don't mind if they introduce a turbo play. I just think it's one of these things where the guy that wrote these fake notes is just playing on the conceptions. And a lot of them are, are like wrong conceptions that people have on the game. So one of the complaints that people had about the game was that the game takes too long. Some, some games are a bit long. And I, I honestly, I really, truly hate to compare Underlords to Artifact, but, you know, this huge, this complaint that Artifact takes too long, Underlords, if you, if you play well, a game will take 40 minutes, easy. And the other big thing is obviously RNG, but let's not go down that rabbit hole. Um, I think the guy that wrote these fake notes is just trying to please everyone. And so he basically just wrote notes on everything that he thought people were complaining about. And since time was one of those complaints, uh, turbo, turbo mode would be the way to, <laughs> to solve that problem in his mind, I guess. So I would have nothing, nothing against uh, turbo play mode. Um, but um, just bear in mind that normal games don't last that long. I think you know maybe they were lasting longer because it was the game is completely new. A lot of people didn't know the the, the game, but nowadays uh, I don't think you can you can expect the games to be so 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 long. But um, yeah, uh, the next point is also a point that I thought is interesting, and I think a lot of people like this on Reddit. But we'll go through Reddit uh, afterwards um, quickly. So. They decided to adjust the main mode based on players' feedback and experimentation. For example, we reduced the randomness of the secret shop and its impact on the game. Both, both players will now see the same item in the secret shop and one of the players can deny it. There are two options of denying the item. The first option denies the other player from holding the item and comes with three gold. The second option denies the item purchase itself and comes with a cost of five gold. How do you see this? Well, that was one of the things that I really enjoyed. I mean, don't you just hate when you play against a deck that just made like 30, 30 to 40 gold because it's playing black or something? And then you see that they can buy Horn of the Alpha or Dominator's Helmet or, or Vests. The possibilities of you just denying them that is so good. I mean... It would be like smart playing. I'm going to waste my money instead of buying an item or something like that. I'm going to deny them the possibility. They don't lose the gold, but they can't buy that item. Because 
you deny the snowball effect. And I, I thought that was like an interesting mechanic to implement, to be honest. Do you though? Because if that player generated a lot of gold, they're still going to have the gold next round. And he will still be able to purchase stuff from his own shop. So I don't know. This is, again, playing to one of those complaints where people say, oh, I lost the game to the secret shop. But very honestly, how often do, does that happen? No, no. Thing, yeah. don't, don't, I'm not talking about, because the, the way I read it is, this is not the items that you have in your own deck. This is the item it's that... Shop. It, yeah. It's the secret shop. It's the secret shop item. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it's really disgusting when like a super item shows up to the other guy and you get like rubbish item and what i meant by this is like if if they got an advantage and the, the secret shop gives them like the rng gives them better chances to hmm. start a start okay. snowball you get the chance to deny the snowball so I mean, would you be happier if both players always saw let's forget about this thing of denying items would you be happy if secret shop just showed both players the same item would that be fairer somehow? Mm, in a way, I think so. But well, we're going to go in that conundrum. And like, if it's the same for both, it's not going to mm -hmm. give you more options. Uh, so it's hard to tell if it's... If, it, if I would like it, I would think it would be more fair. If it would be better to the game, I really don't know. I see. Well, the first thing I think about... Sorry, that was my dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> slaps. <laughs> Swaps. Uh, the first thing I think about is this is not a Dota mechanic and I realize the game doesn't have to be Dota but I just wonder if you really want to change the secret shop items would it not be cooler to just like in Dota give the possibility of just choosing whatever item in, is in the secret shop and make the secret shop hold items that are not available for the normal item deck because like, you know, in Dota, you have the shop at the fountain, then you have the side shop, and then you have the secret shop. And the secret shop items are item, items that are, don't exist in the fountain shop. And the side shop has items that it's kind of a mix. But let's forget the side shop. What if the secret shop showed both players the same item every time, and it was always an item that players cannot deck build with? But that would be frustrating, right? That you couldn't deck build with the items. Well, <sighs> we're gonna. Start That's even more complicated. Eh? <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna start a war here. Um, um, the thing I don't is, like this. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I don't like. I don't really like this idea of denying the item. I somehow, because so let's go back to your example. A player is playing black. He gets. Bounty Hunter track, he gets a bunch of gold, he paydays, he has 100 gold. He's going to deny, do you realize he's going to deny all your secret shop items for the rest of the game? He doesn't even care what it is, he's just going to deny all of them. Well, if he's denying all your items, he's not buying it himself. Well, if he has 100 or 200 gold. Well, uh, like RFX3 is saying in the chat, normally the, the item, and it, I'd say it's like 80% of the time, so yeah. Uh, the item is worse than the ones that you can buy because you've built the, you've built your deck around those items. But we're we're thinking about constructed because if you play limited, this would be so strong to to play against. If you if if you're playing if you're playing draft and, and like Horn of the Alpha a vest something that even like a Shiva. W is it's such a game changer when you're playing limited and you get the chance to buy one of those. So yes, normally, and most of the times when you're playing constructed, the item that is presented to you when you're playing the secret, when you're, when you get a, a secret shop item is normally worst for your tactic and for the way you're, you intend to win the game. It's, I'd still see the, the, the possibility to deny the, the the item. Well, if you don't if you don't want to deny the item completely, you could at least deny the possibility of holding for another turn the item. Yeah, um, I'm on the fence about this. Like this would uh, require a lot of testing. Um, 
I guess it is true. The secret shop item is rarely bad, especially in construction. Um, I think in limited, it comes up a bit more that a random item is slightly better. It just, yeah. it just it just reminds me when you play like the ticket, and you're like, ah, mm -hmm. oh, give, give me something good, and you get like a three gold plate mail. <laughs> yeah, I somehow I I feel like this should hold items that are not in your deck. I don't know I don't know what to to you know to make of this, but um, yeah, I don't think it would be game breaking. I don't think it would be so, bad, but um, I'm a bit on the fence. So. Yeah, like I said, I, I it would be a change that I would find interesting, but for the health of the game, I don't know if it would be good. So let, let's move on. Um, the fake patch notes introduce an overhauled ranked mode where you'll be able to play competitive and you can climb your way to the top of seven different rank medals and fight for the top leaderboard spots. It sounds like, you know, the standard Underlords, Blizzard, Hearthstone, whatever type rank so i don't i don't even know what to say i think we can skip that one unless you have something yeah. specific to say no i i, I just think we should i wouldn't i didn't want to give like uh i didn't want to go through all the topics because mm -hmm. it's, it's clearly fake to be honest i just this point that we just talked about it was something that i thought it was interesting and there's like another one or two things in this yeah. whole post that i find cool I really think it was really stupid, the turbo mode, like I already mentioned. I just think, uh, like, I think it's important to discuss because, you know, we know that Valve devs listen, or at least read Reddit. So I think it is important to discuss these things, even though they're fake, um, and to kind of assess what the community's perspective is on these things. So... Creator mode would be a mode where people could create their own puzzles, their own thingies. I'm all for this. I mean, whatever is adding to the game without taking anything away, like it's win-win. Like there's no like workshop, creator mode, whatever. These things have have to be implemented eventually. And uh, and it's always win-win. I mean, no one loses with this. So it's uh it's a no-brainer. Changes to other game modes. So he suggests this kind of a, kind of changing the rewards. Basically, the existing system will still reward the same amount of tickets and packs based on your amount of wins. However, winning four games will now grant you a booster with one guaranteed shiny card. <laughs> when I read this, this is the first <laughs> thing I thought. This is so fake. Who rides shiny cards? <laughs> danger, danger, Will Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> If you manage to win five times, you'll get a one booster pack with a guaranteed shiny card and one booster pack with guaranteed existing card in a cosmetic redesign. I like the cosmetic redesigns. Like alternative arts are huge in magic, and this is something that is really, really cool. Um, so again, it's a win-win. No one loses if there's cosmetic redesigns or foils or shinies or whatever you want to call them. No one loses if those things are in the game. There's also a rare chance to get a shiny redesigned card, uh, whatever. Yeah, so yeah, I don't have much to say here. Like they can add whatever they want. Again, I, the thing I want the most is imp hats. Give me imp hats. Get, let my imp hold a battle fury. That's what I want. Or or a vanguard or a butterfly. Let them hold badass badass Dota things. Oh, you fanboy. <laughs> it's gonna happen, man. It's 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 inevitable. I mean, what about different imp models? There's people that hate the imps as well. Let yeah. let me change like like couriers, you know. Let me change my imps. I mean, I love the imps. I'm definitely not changing my imp, but I went my I went my imp to look badass. But yeah, but, but this this point altogether is pretty much fan service because since the first day, people have been complaining that. The amount of time, the amount of effort, the money that you spend on tickets, etc., is not worth the the amount of rewards that you get, even when you go five zero. So this is pretty much this is pretty much the the fan service. Yeah, and um, uh, you go, you're going. I think you're going small when you say empaths and uh, give them battle furies and whatever. Um, for me, the possibility of like opening a booster or whatever and it giving me like a different tabletop 
ah, that would be so sweet. <laughs> I liked your ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dominion is commenting on the chat. Give give the option. Um, and um, Simon's in the chat. Hey, Simon. And uh, he's saying, yeah, that would be really bad because uh, actually, if if you would have the option to remove imps, people who want to show off their own imps kind of get denied that. But uh, I don't have I don't have a problem with people removing their imps. Um, but it should be like client sided. Like so, if I remove the imps, my opponent will still see the imps because maybe he paid to have cosmetics on them. Um, yeah, it should always be client side. Yes, if you don't want to see, you don't want to see. But the other guys will see and see yours, even though. Why not? All the obvious stuff: more comics, more re uh, replays. Everyone wants that stats page, of course. You know, give us battle pass, give us uh, artifact plus. Um, I want all that stuff that's in Dota. New soundtrack. Yeah, I'm all for that. Quests. You want to level up faster, but there are miss but are missing more incentives. With the new daily and weekly quest system, we encourage players to play different games and fulfill other missions to learn more experience points and other rewards like unmarketable card packs. So here I just want to say I think art I think artifact was a a great experience. It was a lesson for our, for Valve. And we've seen in the last weeks that they are capable of, capable of adapting and changing things. I mean, I I just cannot imagine it any other way than that Artifact 2.0 will have all these things, all these intensives, incentives, all these things that people want. There's no other way. It has to be in there because otherwise it's just gonna be it's just gonna blow up in their faces again. That's that that's that's another touchy point. Uh, um... The thing is, there's a lot of content in these fake notes, like a lot. And mm -hmm. like 40% of the, the posts on Reddit were like saying, yeah, this won't cut it. This is not enough. I mean, there's like 200 lines of changes here. And people go like, that's not enough. That's not going to revive the game. That will not make me play. Other people were like, oh my God, sweet baby Jesus, this is like the best thing ever. And, and there's there's still people that look at all these amount of changes. There's like stuff here saying that the game will be free. You'll get special cosmetics. You don't even need to spend more money. And, and people still go like, that's not enough. So what the hell is enough for some people? Yeah, uh, and when we'll get there, I think that's important to discuss as well. Um, my gripe with the quests is that um, I don't want to be sucked into this vortex of quests, and I don't want to have to make the quests to get what I want. And you know, I'm I'm all for the game going free to play, whatever. Just please let me still access the market. Let me buy what I want, sell what I want, and don't make me play quests if I don't want to. You know, like th that's really important. Is don't don't shove the quests in my face. Don't make the quests give exclusive rewards uh, and those types of things. So if if they do introduce quests onto the system, please, that's all I I want is don't don't screw the rest. Kind of you know. Okay, I'm gonna put it in this perspective. Let's look at quests. Let's look at Hearthstone quests. I stopped playing Hearthstone a long time ago because quests were something that turned me off. I wanted to play like this deck that I made, but then I logged in and I had like two quests that would give me gold to buy boosters, whatever. If I like played 50 stupid clerics, which I don't play on my deck, or if I like win three games with a hunter, which I don't do, people that play Magic Arena are getting mad at the game because they get bombed with quests and if you don't do the quests it's like almost impossible to be competitive i like the system if you make like an achievement system and i think uh, Mythgard, for example had this if you achieve this by doing this eventually you'll get rewarded with dust with gold with mm -hmm. boosters whatever and that's, and that's the normal steam thing is achievements right? yeah you play the game and eventually you get rewarded don't make me log into the game today and say oh today i feel like you need to like 
play 50 clerics, but I hate clerics. Ha ha, then you don't like gold, you don't like blue exactly. so screw you. That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I meant is don't make me play stuff that I don't want and don't give those quests, those eventual quests, rewards that I cannot get if I don't do that, you know, because then what, those things tend to degenerate into... Oh, it's so it's 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 whatever it's um it's Halloween. So now we have this Halloween quest where you get this whatever you get this item or this card that you cannot get any other way, you know. And events like events are cool. And and well, that's I don't even know I don't even know how to explain. But do you know what I mean? Like don't don't because that thing tends to develop into this this. Uh, this this vortex, this is this tornado where you always have quests and you always have these things that you have to do, otherwise you, you your collection starts to oh, suffer. Yeah. The thing is, games are fun when you can do what you want. When you're like obliged to do something that you don't want, and and most of the games start doing this to grab you. Like you need to log daily and do this and this and this and this. Are you st are you gonna get behind? Or human mentality is like I don't want to miss the chance to get that booster. Or oh crap, I need to log today really fast because I need to get that booster and do that quest. And that 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 turns me off when I play games. And I, I abandon a lot of games because of that. And quests is is like a cancer for me and games being obliged to and i think that's the word if it's not someone please tell me but if if you if you have to log in and do that every day that's not fun that that will turn more people off than yes you'll have the hooked up people logging every day and doing that yeah but a lot that's of what I, that's what i dislike yeah a lot and, of um, yeah simon's saying in chat that uh, you know artifact already has this XP system, uh, XP system where you get bonuses or XP points for playing what you want, and I, again, as long as as long as you don't have to do exactly what they want or log in daily to get a bonus or what, as long as you can do what you want, still reach those things, those goals, I'm completely fine with it. I just don't want it to shape the way that I have to play the game because I want to play the game my way. Yeah, a, a bad example maybe for this, but it's the, the the best example for me in my life. I played World of Warcraft for years, and after a time, I I didn't play anything else because when you you pay a subscription and you feel you need to get your money's worth, and quests has this it has that it implements that mindset for me where I need I need to log in and do this. Because I need my money's worth. I need to get the max out of this. And I really think if they implement quests, it's going to be worse instead of better yeah. for the game. All right. So there's a bunch of uh, card uh, nerfs and buffs. I don't know if you, if you want to, to talk about any of them specifically. No, I, let's. I, I would like to skip those because most okay. of them are just stupid. And <laughs> I was just highlighting. The death <laughs> yeah, buff. I was highlighting the cheating, the cheating death buff where the new text is get initiative before the action phase if there's an allied green hero in this lane. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you green doesn't one. green doesn't get initiative card, but now cheating death gets a buff where. Um, <laughs> where you get you uh, get the inis initiative the car will be broken again <laughs> so yeah this uh, obviously a huge red flag was one of uh, why i also thought this was fake initially but uh yeah oh and the other thing that i love the raven hook cost change from five to four where the cart actually costs six. <laughs> oh, beautiful uh all right so all right, fixes. Fix the game timer, fix animations, etc. So I think if we skip uh, the cards and all these uh, other changes. So well, uh, I think if you look at the if you look the at the changes, um I don't I don't like the his um balances, but if you look at the changes, there's actually some some neato stuff, let's say like that. I mean for example, um, Lodestone will show you the, the total amount of armor on the enemy yeah. side, for example. That, that would be a nice um, quality of life improvement, for example. For sure, for sure. 
I know uh, it's not a card saying, that many people use, but still, uh, it would get much more love if no, the card no, would no, be no. easier to to read when you when you feel like playing it. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, this is clear. All of these quality of life improvements would be amazing. Again, everything that is win win, it's just something that you automatically want to have. So the same with dual friend of fire echo slam. These things would be super cool to have. Yeah, uh, no doubt. So I don't know if if you want to go through some of the Reddit reactions. I, I just want to still uh, the person who wrote this clearly has been BM'd a lot. He's he's been hurt, <laughs> and because <laughs> there there's this point, I I really need to talk about it. Playing cards while the victory button is available will lessen the experience you earn for the match. I mean, this clearly comes from someone who has been BM'd a lot. Yeah, and, and people agree with him on Reddit. This guy's Kuba Clown says, this is low-key one of my biggest gripes with the game, and I had no idea how to fix it. Therefore, I think this leak is 100% real. Genius idea to have Lex XP to, the tro to do trolling is a great compromise. And uh, I mean, I I answered the guy because I thought it was funny. Like, in I mean, people in Dota troll all the time and do stuff like this. You cannot really punish people for <laughs> for having fun with these things. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. My first games, I didn't notice that the button just turned blue when you were able to win. <laughs> so, I, it's it's not something that it, it's it's not shown in a tutorial. You need to play the game and understand how it works. And my my first like ten games, I guess that maybe I, know I need to of... highlight. Oh, do you know what they can do? Actually, you know, before uh, rather than penalizing the player, what you can do is like the animation. If you click it immediately, is like they make some super awesome animation in case you just hit the button straight away. And and if you if you troll, if you like, if you keep playing cards when you could have already won the match, then the animation goes into something else, you know, where your victory victory is like less spectacular or something. It's, it's like good. it's like Simon is saying that's why you need EMPs, man, because they, they <laughs> point at it like they're like they just need a sign like saying, "Look at the goddamn yeah. button." <laughs> Imagine if you just press the button immediately, Roshan comes out, smashes your opponent, and if you don't. Uh, I don't know, your imp commits suicide? I don't know. They can do a lot of stuff with that, but um, I think lessening experience or rewards is not the way to go. <laughs> All right, so most people, I think, were like uh, pretty sure this is fake, etc. cetera, but um, there were also a bunch of people that thought that they liked the ideas in the document and that this was addressing most of the fundamental problems with the, with the game. In my view, one of the most difficult things to assess also is that um, a lot of the problems that people had with the game was related to balance and the cards and so on. And the expansion itself, itself could solve a lot of these problems. And this is something that I also have said in, in other episodes. But without actually looking at the expansion, it's uh, kind of difficult to know exactly how much other stuff you need to to change. Was I the only one that thought that the way that this guy thought about an expansion was completely insane? I mean, sixteen heroes and a hundred cards is too many heroes and too little cards. Yeah, I don't actually know what is the ratio in cult wars. Um, I have no idea actually. Never looked at that. I'm. Uh, I was more curious in trying to get you know some of the people who said. No way, this is not enough to get me back to, to play the game. I kind of wonder what they would like to see, you know? I was trying to find a post that would kind of talk a bit more about that, but uh, I don't think anyone expands too much on that. Yes, because everyone is afraid to get bashed. If you don't expand on this, it's like, what do you want? Because uh, I think that's what we need to take out of this is... What do people want that was not in these um, fake patch notes, you know? Yeah, what, well, that's, that's an interesting point because people go like, this is not enough. But they never go like, this is not enough. I think they need to do this or that, or I think 
this is required or if they don't do this then it makes no sense it's it's just i think most of the people just go like they want the world now because or they they're just in that mindset that nothing will be enough yeah so i think you know like uh, again it's a good exercise to think about these things oh i think i found one so arasha says for example fake and not impressive adopting a free-to-play model similar similar to um, hearthstone is a step in the wrong direction on top of many other things secret shop changes gave this completely away as being fake just what the what the f haven't bothered reading everything but there are not enough smart changes for players to come back read the so yeah he didn't even bother to read the full thing but it's not enough because <laughs> he didn't read the full thing well, this guy at least suggests that people read his own uh, created on uh, what changes the game would need. And he says, in addition to most likely a two-lane turbo or casual mode with four heroes, shorter draft time, that would just be horrible. What? <laughs> would you play Artifact with two lanes? I don't. I don't think I would. That's not art. That's not Artifact. That's a. <laughs> that's supposed a different to be related game. to Dota, man. <laughs> To, uh, yeah, I think yeah. they could make if they, if they want to do a turbo mode, they could do a. But oh, there we go again. If you do something like this, it's just going to be another regular car game because instead of two lanes, you could do just one lane, and then suddenly you'd have a normal car game. Because that's that's why I don't think that turbo mode in a game like this makes any sense without completely destroying the game's identity. So. Look at this guy, for example, uh, Don Killshot. He says, after the success of Underlords and their free-to-play model, considering the last blunder from Arena, like Magic Arena, if it's not a landing card game model with the first expansion free and second paid with all cards, I will lose my faith. I'll just keep playing Under Underlords, no grind for pieces, no daily quests. Oh, just you wait. Just you wait for those battle passes. Uh, just fun. If it's another card game with a daily grind, I'll pass. Just stop and make Half-Life 3. <laughs> um, so I don't think Arena is a blunder. Like Wizards of the Coast is making a lot of money with Arena. But at least this guy says what he wants. He wants a landing game. So that would mean no quests to get cards and no market, basically. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, how, how do you feel about the landing card game, though? Like, would you... Because there's actually not a lot of drawback to that, and they just they would just make money with expansion. I mean, that would be like the similar Dota model where someone can come in, it's free. You have all the cards you can play, and you just pay for cosmetics or whatever. I mean, I don't that's think I'll have anything against that. That's how Dota works. You get all the stuff, and you just pay for cosmetics. And we've and that's that's like that's how we, how we're gonna see Underlords work. And we've seen that that's the working formula. That's what people like. I I can see that happening, yeah. And I would I would definitely not be against that. I don't know. Of course, they would like keeper draft would not exist anymore because you don't draft to keep the cards. But that's a uh, kind of irrelevant, right? So that's a potentially good uh, suggestion, yeah. And regarding the the different game modes and separating the community, I. I think there's there has to be room for mods and people to create their own game types and so on. I don't think that's necessarily going to divide the community. If they do make like a turbo mode thing, in my opinion, they should not like it should be really like a side thing, you know, like making a pauper thing, like just commons type of game mode or or that uh, pre-constructed deck thing that they had in Call to Arms. So. I think there's room for these things. Um, it just can't be like the main, the main type of gameplay, so to say. The interesting thing, though, um, we don't know what's coming with the new patch and what they had in mind to for the, because they were gonna launch something before the catastrophic uh, that post that they put. I think in February. Like a significant amount of time thing, right? Yeah, because they, they were working on something and they stopped, and we don't know what. Because the, the, the game died too soon. We all know that they, they pressed the red button too soon. 
because you, you got that popper uh, example. Uh, there's like a lot of modes that we could have in a game like this. And um, one thing with, that we don't have in um, an artifact that you find in other card games is like fun factor cards. Uh, at least if we have in this game, I can't remember much uh, any of the cards that do that. Because you have cards that they have fun factors that you don't use it competitively, uh, but when you play it, it casually, it's they they do like stupid stuff in the game, and it's it, it, it's fun. And they could have modes just for that. It's important to discuss these things, you know, when the when the real thing hits us. At least uh, we'll have a better sense of what we want as a community, and um, and these things help. Valve, because we know they read it, it helps them also maybe guide the game in that direction a bit. Yeah, but even if they're fake, I mean, there's like one or two interesting stuff in in this. And Yeah, I think there's a bunch of interesting stuff. Even for people that work at Valve, like read this and go like, ooh, oh, I never thought of that. Maybe that could work. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Every feedback that they could get yeah. might, might help. For sure. And now that I kept scrolling down the thread, I think... Uh, Actually, a lot of people agree that free to play with all the cards included is the way to go. And yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think at the end of the day, the Dota model is the best economic model in existence at the moment in the gaming industry. I, I stand by that. You just pay for cosmetics, you pay for statistics and for Dota Plus rewards, and that's it. And that uh, allows more people to, to play and allows everyone to do whatever they want to do. So, you know, that said, I think we can close the episode for today. Any other point you want to touch on? We could mention that you got the reply from Eric, and then he, like some hours or one day after, tweeted oh, yeah. on his tweet that he, because people then started asking him questions. Once he said it was fake, uh, people started asking him more questions, and he, he publicly went, uh, I can't talk about this. Uh, we're doing great stuff, and sadly, we cannot talk about the stuff that we're doing, or something like that. Don't take to my word. To be quite word. honest, I think what might have happened here um, is that he answered me that the post was fake, and there were some subsequent conversations where, of course, people started asking him more things, and. Um, I don't know if it's Eric, but I know that other devs have gotten into trouble about talking about stuff on social media. Media, excuse me. <laughs> um, I wonder if someone told him to stop answering, like stop talking about it, you know? So he says, oh, geez, people following me because of video games. I'm sorry, I can't talk about stuff I'm working on while I'm working on it. I really wish I could. Uh, also, hopefully I can stop tweeting about politics, etc. cetera. That's uh, un unrelated. Um, is, but it, is it is it unrelated or is it a, a <laughs> subliminal subliminal message saying that back comes out in <laughs> Well, people start replying. People reply to him, and then he says, "The concept here is that the remaining artifact players freaking love artifact, which is awesome, and they are awesome, and they want some news. But there's not a damn thing I can say about that, and I know that's a bummer." And then Tyler McVicker and myself um, start talking with him. Um, but basically, yeah, he apologizes for not being able to talk about the game, and he's clearly frustrated about it. But um, I just think it's super awesome that, they, that he says that we are awesome and that we freaking love Artifact, because it means he knows we're here, and that's good. I was going to say, trying to say something smart, but no, I, I'm going to pass. <laughs> Yeah, so with that, I want to let everyone know that we're still on podcast applications, we're on YouTube, and we're now hopefully going to start streaming these things. I've been toying around with uh, my uh, PCs and uh, setting up streaming, so um, I'm super happy that uh, people have joined us today um, here on Twitch. And um, yeah, the VOD will be here. I'll obviously upload things as usual. Um, over the course of this weekend. I hope the episode should be published. But um, yeah, I want to say everyone, thanks for the support. You know, we're not a lot, but uh, we're good. And uh, all right, see you guys. See you guys till next week.